Hi, in this video, we'll be going through two key concepts in the chapter on work, energy and power. Okay, so for the first concept, this is work done. Now, most of you would think of work done as being force times distance move in the direction of the force. This is the official definition. And it is the definition that you should quote when you are asked directly in the question. However, it's not very useful for understanding what work done means or how to use the concept of work done. Okay, how to use the concept of work done? You have to think about it as an amount of energy that's transformed or transferred. Right? Remember from the principle of conservation of energy, that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. So what this definition is telling us is that when work is done by a force, so when a force uh, acts on an object and the object moves in the direction of force, what is happening is that there will be some uh, amount of energy converted from one form to another. And the work done, that amount, that you calculate is the amount of energy that's converted. So let's look at a very simple example. If you have an object that's dropped from a certain height, uh, it's going to lose GPE and it's going to gain KE, right? So GPE is being converted to KE. Now, if you think about the forces that are acting on it, there is a weight, which is basically gravitational force acting on it, right? And uh, as the gravitational force acts on it, the object actually moves through a distance downwards, right? So basically, right, the work done by gravitational force is referring to amount of energy converted from GPE to KE. And this is very helpful for us to understand what is the flow of energy or what are the conversions in energy that are taking place. And this is very important because this is what will help us to construct our equation to help us to solve. Just like what I mentioned earlier, you know, if you just read the textbook for conservation of energy and just memorize it, right, you, you, you will come up with this line, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, it can only be converted from one form to another. But uh, at this level, Sec 3 and Sec 4, we have to uh, think deeper, right, and try to understand some uh, implications behind all these statements that we are asked to memorize, not just memorize alone. That's not good enough for us to score our A's anymore, okay? So the thing that we have to consider deeper now is if energy is conserved, what is the flow of energy that is happening, right? If you can create a flow chart of what energy is converted to what energy, you can actually use that flow chart as a guide to help you to construct an equation that can then help you to solve the question. We, we can look at two examples uh, moving forward. These examples are showing you the key concept number two, which is that it is very important for us to construct a diagram to understand the flow of energy in the question and then use that diagram to help us to construct an equation that helps us to solve, okay? So that's key concept number two. Let's have a look at this question. Now you can pause the video here and try it on your own first before uh, resuming the video and uh, I'll show you the answer. Assuming you have tried the question already, this question is giving us a block that is sliding down uh, a 10 meters of a rough slope. Now when the question says rough slope, this means that there is friction involved, okay? And here it says frictional force of 5 newtons between the block and the slope. And we are supposed to calculate the speed of the block when it reaches point P here. We have to think about the flow of energy first, right? So construct a diagram. What are the energy conversions happening here? We start off with the block at a high point and then at a low point, right? So obviously what's happening is the energy is starting off all in the GPE state. And then as it slides down, this GPE is going to be converted to KE. Now along the way, uh, the block is actually going to do some work against friction as well. So in not 100% of the GP will be converted to KE because some of the GP will be used up to overcome friction as well. And we can call this work done against friction. Okay, now if you remember the first key concept that I mentioned, work done always refers to some amount of energy, energy that's converted, right? And in this case, work done against friction basically means that some of the energy is converted to heat. Remember when you have friction, you're going to produce heat. And where does that heat come from? From the GP in this case. We can use this to then construct an equation. We can say that the loss GPE is equals to the gained KE plus the work done against friction. Okay. Now, once we have this basic concept statement, we can then fill in all the details. Now, loss GPE, if you think about it, should be m times g times h, right, where m is uh, 4 kg, g is 10, oops, I can't write this anymore, 10, and h is the vertical height here, 5, okay? Now, gained ke, it's very important for us to note that gained ke is, we are talking about an increase here, huh? 
So we have to write like final k half mv squared minus initial k. We must always remember to minus the initial k. Okay, in this case, initial k is zero, uh, so we just put a minus zero there. Okay, but this is to uh, this is a good habit uh, to put even if it's minus zero because sometimes in the more tricky questions, the initial is not zero, and if you don't have this habit, you might miss that out and make a careless mistake. Okay, now next thing is work done against against friction. So that would be force times distance force times distance and that would be frictional force 5 newtons distance uh, that's moved in the direction of the frictional force that would be this distance here 10 meters okay so substituting the values in right you will get the final answer uh, 8.66 meters per second right let's look at the next example for the next example, we have an external force pushing a block along a horizontal rough surface. Now, in this case, the external force, whoever is pushing, like say, if I'm the one pushing, that means I'm the one that's transferring energy to the block. Okay, so the source of energy here, right, is the work done by the 10 Newton force. And then where is this energy being transferred to? Well, obviously, if it's a horizontal surface, there's not going to be any gain in GPE, right? So what happens is the Ke of the object is going to increase, right? It's going to speed up. But at the same time, notice that there's a 2 Newton frictional force here. So again, some of this uh, energy provided by the pushing force, right? Some of this work done by the pushing force has to be used to overcome friction, right? So that's work done versus friction. Okay, so again, using this idea that we have in our head now, we can construct an equation, right? So the work done by the 10 Newton is equal to the gain in Ke plus the work done against friction. Okay, and then from here again we can convert it to uh, the uh, formulas. Force times distance equals to half m v squared minus initial Ke. Initial Ke is like it's from rest, right? So this is zero, and then plus uh, uh, frictional force times the distance. Okay, so uh, the values here should be 10 times 6.4 equals to half times what 2 times v squared plus friction is 2 times uh, again 6.4. Okay, so again solving for v, we should get the final speed as 7.16 meters per second. Okay, right, so I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next video.